Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and in this episode we'll be talking about the benefits of the BIM process during the planning and design phase. I'm joined in the studio today by Wolfgang Huss, a principal expert on BIM. Wolfgang, thank Hello. you for joining us. So what are some of the benefits of using the BIM process and the BIM approach during the designing and plan phase? Yeah, I would say the biggest change and the biggest benefit is the uh, collaboration in design. Uh, today we have these design in a sequence, time-wise sequence, due to the fact that we are doing the design according to the progress of the uh, physical construction. Mm -hmm. And with the BIM process, these will change because we will first build the building, a virtual model. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's also the, the uh, uh, naming, we're building twice, w once uh, the virtual model and secondly the f uh, physical model. Yeah, mm -hmm. And with this opportunity, uh, having a coordinated design in a very early phase with the right products built in. So the competition will be in an early phase of this virtual design phase. Yeah, We can really do a planning according to the possibilities and needs of the individual products. The other one is, it's a coordinated approach. So lots of things here, yeah, they are cross-discipline. So it's lighting, for example, they have a connection to facades, facade to HVAC, HVAC has to electricity and so on. These are cross-discipline solutions. And if they are split into different tenders, as today, yeah, we have problems to coordinate them. We have problems to coordinate the systems which are used, and we have problems in designing the solution. With the BIM approach, it's in parallel, it's coordinated. There is another name also for this room. The American, they, they call it a big room. It's mm -hmm. a big room approach. So they are really sitting in these BIM projects together in one room and doing the design. It's a coordinated design, and that's a, one of the big benefits. Okay, so but, this would, oh, sorry, yeah, please But continue. behind these, yeah, it's very important that they are talking the same language, they are using the same data models, and therefore we need standards again. Okay, Yeah. so by having these standards and also being involved very early and making some of these decisions before we start to dig holes and build buildings, yeah. enables us to understand how things will work together and plan those interactions before we start to plug things in and, and hang them onto the roof. Yeah, and there it's, it's very important because the database is available so we can run simulations and test programs based on these designed, customized building. And then we can prove our concepts. Today, there are also some simulation programs available, but the problem is that the da database is not standardized. So we have to map the data from the customer's database to the simulation programs, and that's quite cost intensive. So the software, simulation software, says there are lots of products available here. Yeah, they are really good, but today, too often we are using assumptions and not real data to feed in into these simulations. Okay, so we build these simulations, but we're not using the actual products that will be installed. We're using a, a generic version. Or black boxes, or there is data which is really too expensive to import them. So we are trying to make the simulation with, with assumptions. Mm -hmm. And so it's much more real to do these uh, simulations. And honestly, I personally believe that in future, it will be part of the contract to fulfill what's promised in simulations because there are no excuses yeah that the assumptions were wrong and so on these were real data and so it's much more, much more fair for the customers and for all the partners to deal with real data okay. and then people know what they will get what they will get yeah okay yeah. and if we can't fulfill in the simulation what we promised in this virtual phase, then maybe we uh, should change the concepts or we should do something different. Mm -hmm. But if the building is already under construction, yeah, it's difficult to change something. And what are some of the things that we're able to simulate to make these decisions? Yeah, there are lots of simulations possible and um, that's not new. Other in industries, yeah, they're doing lots of simulations. Maybe you have heard the uh, Mars rover. Yeah, everything was simulated, mm -hmm. by the way, by a Siemens software. Okay. And um, so there are other industries yeah, which are used to use uh, simulations here. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not in the building industry. We are checking out in reality what happens here. Yeah. Um, 
but being a little bit more concrete, for example, evacuation is an issue. If there is any problem in the building, a fire or an attack or tourism or whatever, we can simulate how the building can be isolated or evacuated here. And the software therefore is available, but again, we have to map all the data from the static model into this evacuation model and then we can run it, but that's too expensive today. There are other simulations, thermal uh, simulations, yeah, or for example simulation if you want to refit something, yeah, uh, you're of sure disturbing the operation of the normal mm -hmm. building and so you can reduce it, yeah, um, just by simulating, by checking in the virtual model what happens if, and that's much, much easier. And there's another point. Mm -hmm. Today, there's a lot of measuring needed in buildings here yeah, before you're starting a refit. Mm -hmm. Or you have to open a wall because you don't know are there tubes in, uh, is there a cabling and so on. And these model use can see that this is a pure concrete wall and there is no wiring, nothing. Or you know the wiring is here or there. So it's much more transparent uh, to make this refit. Yeah, it's. In today, we, we really have to learn the building when we are starting the refit. Yeah, we have to check out what really happens, and there are lots of surprises. Because we don't trust the plans that we're given. Or there are no plans. Yeah. In many cases, there are no plans. So if, if everyone involved, every stakeholder that, uh, that constructs a building provides the information in the standardized way and provides complete information, we're able to test those design decisions that we make before we even start to build mm -hmm. to ensure that the designs are correct and the mm -hmm. operation will be as expected by the, the end user. Yeah. Well, that's really not new. I do not know any other industry which is starting the production before the plants are ready. Yeah. I don't know any industry yeah, which is starting production before they have simulated everything. I heard the analogy once that uh, no one would start to build a car before they had decided which engine they would put in it. For example. Yeah. Yeah, but we are starting, let's say, with the wheels here. Yeah? They look good. Then we are starting with uh, a, a little bit metal around here. Yeah? And then a little bit later, we should talk about seats and instruments and so on. Yeah? It's not a stepwise uh, wise approach. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a complete virtual planning simulation. And then we should start. Because any change after we have started the construction will cost a hell of money and the opportunity to change when the physical construction already has started is getting lower and lower. Mm -hmm. So changes are cheap and easy in the beginning and later on you're really uh, you are hindered <laughs> by the progress of the construction. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you all for joining us at Buildings of Tomorrow. Please feel free to comment, like or share this episode or subscribe to us here on this channel. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.